What's good? It's Fever. Today we'll be going over a list of must-have mods for Skyrim updated for 2017. Namely, these mods are for the special edition version of Skyrim, but most of these will have a version for the original or a variant that does the same thing. The aim with this list is to group a bunch of mods together that anyone can and everyone should use. But because of this, the mods here are going to be a little bit boring as we veer away from overhauls or things based in preference and move more to towards things that fix or tweak or clean up systems or eliminate frustration. To start off the list, we have arguably the most important mod, the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch, or USEP. The purpose of this mod isn't just to add, but to fix. It is in essence an amalgamation of the community's ongoing ability to fix problems in Bethesda's game, and as bugs are found out and fixes created, they are just kind of added to the pile. This mod will eliminate hundreds of quest, item, text, NPC, just everything related to bugs that would normally just piss you off if they'd happen in the normal game. The second mod here, from the same author, is the Cutting Room Floor. Whereas the official patch fixes and doesn't add, this mod adds but doesn't fix. In the original game data, there were a ton of assets and stuff that was just left out of the game, and whether this is because Bethesda ran out of time or money to implement them, it's not really important. What this mod does is brings a good deal of the stuff that was supposed to be in the game into the game, and this includes a large number of items, NPCs, scenes, locations, spell effects that are now going to be found in the game, and you can't get much more lore friendly than stuff that was supposed to be in the game that the original design team wanted in the game, and more is always good. Now we'll shift away from game assets and look at the interface, as it's a little bit of a mess, especially if playing on PC. It very clearly feels like a console port and is clumsy to use with the mouse and keyboard, and I strongly suggest using both better message box controls and better dialogue controls, and simply put, this is just going to make using the mouse and keyboard make sense and feel intuitive. It's going to give added functionality to the arrow keys and tab and enter and escape and the E key to accept and it's going to allow the mouse to act like a mouse and click on things that you for whatever reason couldn't click on before. You don't even really have to read the mod pages here. Just install and enjoy the control you were expecting when playing on a PC. Now you may also notice that my interface isn't standard, I am using an interface overhaul, Sky UI. Unfortunately, there isn't an official release of Sky UI yet. There are some other interface overhauls that you can try that have popped up, but honestly, it's a preference thing at this point. You can do like me, and you can install an older version of Sky UI. This is the 2.2 version from the original Skyrim's mod page, and I'll link that off in the description below. It has lessened features in the special edition, but it just looks better in my opinion, and when the script extender comes out, most likely this is going to be a must-have mod for everyone's mod list if you are using mods. The next mod I want to show you is something that I can't show you. It's called 60 FPS interface, and as I hope you can put together, this video is running in 30 FPS, and this mod is going to make your interface run in 60, so you're going to have to take my word for this. Now, here's the thing. This really is a mod fixing a problem that you didn't know you had. It's not just about the frames, it's really about the smoothness of moving within the interface. It feels snappier, it feels more responsive, and it's one of the mods that's tough to go back from. Even though it affects so little, you just have to try it. You won't regret it. On the topic of fixing issues you didn't know you had, this is the one borderline subjective mod here. D13 Get Up Stand Up. This changes and more importantly speeds up the animation time to stand up after getting knocked down. You may not have clocked it yourself, but when you get knocked down, once the ragdoll physics and the momentum stop and you kind of settle and your character starts to stand up, it takes about 6 seconds. This mod will knock it down to under 3, and this mod is solely responsible for me learning how to convert animation mods from original Skyrim to special edition because I won't fucking play Skyrim without this mod. Next, we have another twofer, Run For Your Lives and When Vampires Attack. These two mods affect every citizen in Skyrim and gives them a bit of common sense when there are attacks in or around towns. This prevents the humble farmer or the innkeeper from thinking it's a good idea to go punch a blood dragon or a vampire that's attacking the town and just killed all their patrons. And instead, people who don't stand a chance fighting will run and hide, while people who may stand a chance, like say guards or a member of the companions or whatever, will 
will actually try to fight off the dragon or the vampire or whatever. This is kind of rad on its own, but the purpose of this mod really is to prevent NPCs from killing themselves, which is even more important if you happen to remove essential status on NPCs. And these are just must-haves, and for NPC behavior, they're compatible with almost everything, which is really impressive. And I guess you could even say there's some immersion or role-playing in it that, you know, the innkeeper shouldn't be trying to fight the dragon, but they're just must-haves. Next is Acquisitive Soul Gems. Super straightforward, this mod makes it so you cannot soul trap a soul in a gem that is larger than it. So you can't get a lesser soul put into a grand gem. This is painful if you've ever played a character that relies on soul trapping. This only needs that one line. This just averts so much frustration. The last true mod here is going to be Alternative Start. This makes it so instead of starting the game with the carriage ride that leads to your beheading, you are in a prison cell immediately in character creation. It then drops you into the cell and it allows a little bit of time for mods to initialize, but then you can go talk to this statue where you can choose a kind of backstory like you're a member of a guild or you're a necromancer or you're a wealthy merchant or you own a home in River Run. And then you just go to sleep and then you wake up in a place suitable to your backstory with starting gear and stuff that kind of makes sense towards it. And while this is rad in a role-playing sense, it really adds acts as a quick start where you can push start on the main menu to begin playing and be killing mud crabs in less than a minute. And if you're like me and you are on playthrough, I don't know, 106, this is just a godsend because you don't want to go through that carriage ride one more fucking time. And lastly, a non-mod, Beth I and I. So if you've been around the mod scene in Skyrim, you have probably done or at least heard of I and I tweaks. Configuring your game past what the launcher allows you to do using these text files. Beth I and I, or Bethany, is a tool that will basically just optimize those I and I files. This is going to improve performance or graphics quality or increase the amount of grass that you see. It can even debug a ton of problems. It smooths out shadows. This non-mod will even detect what mods you have installed and then we'll make changes that the mod author recommends for those mods. It really just is like an I and I wizard and while the launcher will recommend you different types of presets like medium settings or high settings, Beth I and I has those as well but they always seem to perform better performance wise and in graphic fidelity. So what I do recommend to people is to start up the game in the launcher and see what the launcher recommends. So it says, okay, we have clocked your system and we know that you can do ultra performance. Then use the Beth I and I ultra preset. If it says medium, use the medium Beth I and I preset. You know, I, I really can't say enough positive things about this. It's almost like free performance and better graphics, even if it's just slight, for no cost. And this is especially impactful on the lower end of systems, and it backs up your original I and I's just in case. So that's going to do it for me. How many mods was that, like 12? This mod will surely double when the script extender comes out, and I'll revisit the list then. If you know of some must-have mods that aren't about preference, but really can just fit into anyone's mod list, go ahead and drop a comment. I think we all watch videos like this for the same reasons. Until next time, this is Fever. Peace.